Welcome to hey. Monday night. Hey. Um, hey. Rent with myself, Michael Burgio, Mark Novak, and Pravin. You know your surname. It's hard to pronounce. Pravin Mala. Yeah. Oh, Mala's good. Pravin Mala. Mala's on the passport, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and. Oh, then Michael's tile that goes off in every meeting, whenever we have a meeting with clients, Michael's tile will always go off in the meeting. At least once. And we had one meeting a couple of months ago where it went off about 12 times in the meeting. Yeah. But it was only a small development site. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And the reason I was looking at uh, Pravin's passport was we have a trip to Thailand coming out really soon. So. Mark, you've done it before. Yes. What is it? What, yes. prevent, what yes. can Prevent and I expect? Okay, so besides it being bloody hot, yeah. we're all, it's 40 degree heat. We're all going to Thailand in about a week's time. Uh, we've got uh, Pravin, who's a pro, who's actually done, he told me today, he didn't tell me before, three, <laughs> he's done 300 kilometers in one day, yeah. over 15 hours. So this is a man that's an athlete for bicycle riding. I'm I'm pretty like shocker. Um, yeah, I was gonna, use, I was gonna hey, use another word for it, but it may offend people. His exercise on the bike is with an electric bike. Yeah. So, so a bit of battery will do it. Yeah. I don't think they offer that there. And Michael is pit crew, was yeah. meant to be riding, but he broke his spine four years ago, five years. So five years ago. It's um, injured again. So working really hard in real estate, you hurt, you broke your spine because he does anything for clients. Anything. He runs that mile. He was sprinting to a client's property for exchange and tripped. Yeah. So, but all serious as Michael's but, a but his pit crew. Yeah. Uh, Pravin's the champion. Not Thirty not. riders, uh, all real estate agents, going over and above through Thailand, finishing in a children's home that needs funding. Mm. Um, the great thing is we're paying for everything ourselves any anything that's actually sponsored is going to be go straight to the kids so there is nothing at all that is going towards anyone anyone else there's no i think there was something on the news about the fireys and stuff and yeah yeah um, there was money there was administration money none of that this is all going in so yeah. we need your help we need you to uh pledge and support Little old man Novak on a bike or big, strong, powerful Pravin on a bike. Uh, we're going to whack the link in below. Yep. And last year was interesting. Yeah, last year, what you raised, I think in total, it was like a couple hundred grand, wasn't it? Uh, the group? Yep. The group. Yeah. So nice. 28 riders we raised, I believe it was about 260 grand. Um, huge. That's and huge. at the end, we had dinner at the home with all the kids. Yep. Um, the house is, get this one. Um, the guy who organised it's Peter Baines. Mm. Peter Baines was was um, used to work for um, the Australian government for um, and also for some amazing countries around the world. What he's done, but he worked for the Australian government. The government deployed him to do body recognition. Mm. It was the biggest. Um, it was the biggest biggest body identification works anyone's ever had to do in the world. Peter um, identified. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people after the tsunami. Mm. So after the tsunami, Peter um, couldn't leave Thailand seeing it in the state that it was actually in. Yep. Um, and, and he met a lady, um, which is a beautiful lady, um, and she is now a monk, and she, uh, she had personally um, buried in her life, I think it was in the order of about 1,500 people. She so these kids came to her home. They didn't have enough food or medicine, mm. and for the sheer fact of not having a food or medicine, lost these kids. Um, so basic uh, supplies, basic, basic stuff. Supplies. And yeah. Pete was going, that is not right. And Pete, if you do watch this, please correct me. Um, so what he started doing was actually pledging, um, get, going out to Australia and saying, mm -hmm. well, you know, if we can take a little bit of money back, that can save lives. Yep. Yes. Um, get this no more kids are dying um but they're still out of homes mm. um so and we're still building these these shelters for them so as part of that it's called um, hands across the water that's why we're doing the ride yep. and we're doing it in a week's time if you just tuned in yes. uh we're on a bike 100 kilometers a day 
five days in a row uh, in the heat of Thailand, mm. and any money, any dollar that anyone puts in to contribute goes straight to the kids, not nothing for administration. Beautiful. Do we let Pravin talk or no? No. We'll get into something else. So, Eric. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, why did you do it? Why, yes, why did you I want to do it? The biggest uh, motivation for me was the cause itself. Because it's, we are doing for something that is going to help someone. And everything that, or every possible way we can, we would be doing that and try and bring in whatever money. A little money from each person that we know would help a long way to those kids. Massive. And we can't see what a, ten, a $15 burger would be a, an easy meal for someone here, but that $15 changes a lot of life in Thailand Big time. for the kids. So uh, anyone who wishes to contribute with the smallest of the amounts, with the amount of uh, friends and families we have on Facebook, we invite everyone to contribute whatever little amount they can. And we would do our best to bring that money back to, uh, sorry, get that money off to Thailand <laughs> yeah, really and back. bring back those memories where they can see what yep. an amazing effort they're putting mm. to raise these kids and bring them up to an, a reasonable living standard. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And guys, it's often really hard because our standard of living, living in Australia is just so good. Yeah. Um, and in, in, uh, I think you, you can, uh, Pravin, you've, you've immigrated here, so um, it's probably a lot more clearer. But a lot of us out there, um, we're not exposed to not it. exposed to it. So it's just yeah. really good to be able to help something, anything to someone out there. Um, and it doesn't necessarily. And I and I know there's plenty of good places to put your money if you're going to be contributing. But the nice thing is we're going there. We know where it goes. Mm. We support it. We endorse it. It is good. And I've been there before and there's no bullshit. You know what I mean? So I think when you're putting a little bit of money, like you said, you're paying 15 bucks for a burger. If you can put 15 bucks in, that is fantastic. You do that with all our friends in our community. Exactly. Um, last year, I think I, I raised, um, our aim's $5,000 each. Hmm. Um, so, um, and, and last year, I think it got to about 10,000 or something that yeah. I raised from everyone supporting. And Very the great good. thing was everyone um, was part of it. So yeah. we... I think everyone, uh, people that I spoke to, they felt like they were part of the journey. Exactly. exactly, exactly. The beauty about, I think, the last year's ride and what motivates me to come along is you going across the journey and showing us what you were doing. In tights. Yeah. yeah. You and, like seeing him in tights, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> that, was, that was the funny part, but yes, yeah. it, it was for a good cause and it would, we would do whatever it takes, like I said. So yeah. it, would it be in tights or running around in our, our undies? It doesn't matter. As long as we are able to support someone, make their life better, yeah. we would do it. We're doing, we're doing it for the Aussies, help doing our, doing our piece offshore. Mm -hmm. And you know what? A lot of offshore did, a lot of offshore people did stuff for us yeah. um, in, in, in the fires and the bushfires yeah. and stuff like that. So it's nice to reciprocate and stuff like that for exactly. these yeah. guys. Okay, so that's Thailand. On to the next one, Arik. A-R-E-C. Biggest real estate conference in the world. In the world. It's soon. We're going. <laughs> no, I think it's June 1. June 1. Yes. That sort of ish. That weekend ish. Yep. Um, largest real estate conference. It will have, it's basically um, the top performers in the industry. And also there's always some sort of like a motivational speaker, uh, philosopher, or like uh, who they had last year, Dr. Fred was it, or someone like that. They always have someone Massive along those speakers, lines. Yeah. Big, big, it's a big training camp well, for um, real estate. One, one of the speakers was the, what's that, that famous Van, Vin, Von, Vin, Von, Van, the social yeah. media guy? Yeah. No, Gary no. Vanderchuk. One year that Gary Vanachuk no, uh, crossover yeah, and yeah, do yeah. a speech to yeah. him. So, so yeah. it's huge, big motivation from specific people doing it in the industry and um, at least it's, there's Le <laughs> Lisa will be speaking um, about, especially a lot of social media uh, presentation there. So fucking huge, huge to be speaking in front of 5,000 people over the weekend. We've gone for the last few years. It's been great. <laughs> yes. We yeah. attended every single talk, every talk, but we're really proud. Um, bit of an applause there for, for Lisa. Yes. There you go. There you go. There you go. We're, um, well done, Lise. We're really proud that Lisa Novak has been asked to speak amongst the real estate elite yep. to the real estate elite. So um, where, you know, she's, uh, and what is she talking about? Social media. Social media, media selling off social media. So uh, there's, um, I think last week she spoke to in front of a thousand agents. Like there's, Social media being implemented in real estate, it's, 
I think people have tried to dabble in it because they didn't really know the power of it. Uh, oh, battery. Uh, power of it. And then Lisa's just sort of gone in there, gun hose. I think it's what, 30, 40 deals. Did you say gun hose? <laughs> Not calling you. <laughs> gun hose. Not calling you. It's like gun hose <laughs> with an S E at the end. Basically calling you a It's like real estate thing. <laughs> yeah. I'll put a battery on while you're talking. Yes. So that's going to be really exciting um, in front of it through there. And it's a big endorsement for her and the company. Like if you have a look at the setup that we have here to put this on, social media is the way forward. And we've done many talks on it. It's a way forward in all businesses. So even if you're not in real estate, you go, it doesn't apply to me. It does because there's a lot more people on social media that don't care about real estate. So therefore you may have a product or service that you could offer them as well. So I think it's going to be very, very powerful. I think it's been cracker. And Pravs, Pravs, you've come from out of the industry. What do you reckon about this old, the old uh, social media and Arik and Lisa talking and, and observe? Because Lisa's been observed. You would have been observing yes, all this, all these action uh, Jackson. No and I think uh, the biggest factor or the difference is uh, I just the am amount of energy she puts into this business. Yep. And and why she's in going or uh, invited to Arik. The possible reason is the biggest contribution she has made into this industry by bringing in something that is revolutionary yeah, and yeah. not not many people realize that this could be such a big thing mm. where people yes. were struggling to sell a couple yes. of properties through their own possible source of references and cold calling and old style uh, uh, smart. flyer drops and stuff and there walks in a lady who has just massively influenced this social media and she, she, she sells properties like a piece of cake. It doesn't even go online. And there she is posting saying, I've sold it even before that's online. Now people have been absolutely blown by this. Yeah, product. it's has been done one way for that's so incredible. long. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. And I think that's actually good because you know what? I'm probably a bit caught up in it. It's great to hear it from, from Pravs because mm. he's seen it fresh through fresh eyes. Yes. Um, and to be on the world stage now talking about it, um, it's nuts. And you know what? I just keep can't I I can't crack the code. Mm. I try to sell hard on social. I can't crack the yeah. code. She sort of cracked the code, and I think people know that she's cracked the code. That's why she's on talks talking about the code that she's cracked. Yeah, I've said it as well. Like I think like with commercial, do it, but definitely don't get the same momentum. So interesting. Interesting. We'll keep evolving um, through that. Next topic. Next topic is. Um, our Novak Expo, sell to the best sellers in town. What is it, Mark? Well, before we move on, can we say good day to everyone? No. Ignore them. Don't no, do like that. Kidding. Um, Lisa says no holes. <laughs> no holes. We love uh, the holes. Luke Maroney, Mr. how McKee. are you? Val, Lisa. Matt Time. Casey Bates, how are you? Dudes. Get some blonde hair. You William said Lisa. Lisa. I'll get some blonde hair. Talk to me, the, uh, we've got to talk to you about videos. Ruby Gibson, Century 21. Casey hey, Ruby, friends with Chantel. Who's over here? Casey. Yes. Casey, Casey, Casey in the Sunshines? No, no. <laughs> no? Casey Clark and Hummel. Uh, uh -huh. Luke, Luke Maroney. Luke, if you're not doing enough sales at Clark and Hummel, come over. We're happy to talk with you at Novak and <laughs> see what we can do here. And uh, peace out to you. Yeah, thanks for watching. Okay. <laughs> Novak uh, Expo Night. Very interesting. I th another thing, we always like to do things differently and change it up. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to hear because, you know, there's always stuff out there where you hear of it and you're like, oh, why didn't I get told of that? Or where? Yeah. But then you think to yourself, well, how do they tell me? I'm busy. They call me and you flog them off or you say, send me an email. Yeah. And it do you don't, you, you sort of like, I get that I don't give them the time. But then where do they give you the time? Yes. So we're now allocating. It was a, it was a big gap, eh? Yeah, huge. So like a photocopy salesperson or a, or a phone salesperson, I think when after you've taken the 30th call from them in one year, mm. I think you lose a bit of sensitivity as, as a real estate yes, agent. Yes, exactly. Um, and some of these guys have a great bloody photocopier or a great phone yeah. system. And we actually don't actually give them the time of day to say, cool, come in, have a chat, um, show us what you got. Yep. And there's new products. Yeah. And I, th I think it's going to be really good. We're going to have all 50 staff in the office at the time. Mm -hmm. Going to be a little bit of a showcase. Um, ever, all the new, all the people with their products to sell who genuinely are passionate enough to come yeah. out. Because <laughs> sometimes you're happy to make the call, but you actually don't want to go in because sort of, you're, oh, you're not that excited. I'm people excited. that are passionately excited, yeah. they're going to come in, show us what they got, and then we can deliver that to our clients. Yeah. 
it's basically like Shark Tank. You know, they go in. Yeah, you sort of bench up like that. Yeah. Just a bitch. And oh, we should also get like, you know, we should get a, a, a thing that we hit. So if it's a shit product, just cross. Eh. X Factor. And you send them out. There's no X Factor about that. Business. Yeah. Send them out. But I'm excited to see. We could just go walk in and just go, like You're when they walk, keep, walk in, keep just going. Go, five, yeah. four, three, two. Tell us what you got. Yeah. 30 seconds. So I'm excited to. I want to see something that I need to think of and it just fucking blows your mind. You know, like, we need that in the business. Could That's be, that wow thing. Could it be basic? It could be basic. There's some northern, you know, I, I, we do a little article called Buried in Brookvale and the stuff that you see that Brookvale pumps out, yep. it's like, oh, I never knew that stuff was there. Yep. This is the chance for these guys to come say good day, tell us, and we can also broadcast it out through our network. Yes. What they've got. Yep. So it's pretty interesting. So it's Novak Expo Night. I believe it's the soon ish. Soon. I think it's the fifth. Yeah, it, it's coming out. We're posting it regularly. The, you'll see the Most, post come up. I think it's the fifth. I thought it was 17th of March after we got back. Yeah, 17th of March. Yeah. Something change, around there. I'm change what date I put online. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's coming up. So that's an opportunity. If you know anyone who's got a product. Yes. Uh, and friend, family, friend, business family, person. business person, yes. and you think it could help us or real estate or the real estate industry, then come along. We don't. If you can help us, help 18, you help them, 18, help, help, you, help yeah. us. Help yes. 18. Lisa's Somewhere good with those dates. Yeah, she's organized. Um, so, very organized. And um, so, and then I think to conclude, why the hell do we do this stuff? Like, why are we, Eric, why are we doing the bike ride? Why doing the expo? This is all out yeah. of the job role or maybe description we'll, of everyone else. Maybe we'll are we work crazy? It out when we get old. Yeah. I don't know. What do you reckon, Prav? Yeah. I, I think it's it's just to keep our memory cells alive. Yeah. It keeps us fresh, keeps us pumping with new ideas, try to bring out our best and also bring in the best practices that we see around. You should bring him on all the time. Mm. He's really good. Yeah. Prav, <laughs> sharp. So, yeah. It is true because you can get you can get it's getting complacent if you yeah. keep. And that's where I think the social media, I think it well, relates to the social, social media. media. To these yeah. cats that are in us, like, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. But where's the benefit to them? Where's yes. the benefit to us? And where's the benefit to our clients with no, 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 no? Yeah. Because I'd love if, to see these guys. If you're an agent out there and you say no Farmers to every- yeah, yeah, if you're if you're saying no to every opportunity, then you don't know if there's a better way to do it. Like how many people said no to putting a listing on social media before they lease has done it? Yeah. And they've missed it because they never did it. So there's things like that that could be under our nose that could change the industry and make processes faster for landlords, sellers. So, and we want to know. And if there's not, at least we fucking know. We gave it a go. We gave it a go. <laughs> we know so there's nothing else out if there. If you've got family, friends, or yourself have got a product you'd like to pitch to us in our business, yeah. Novak Expo Night rolling out yep. uh, shortly. Like Arik, Lisa talking on the world stage at Arik to 5,000 real estate agents. agents, really proud. And yep. what is she talking about? Selling on social. So we're very good at it, by the way. We're going to be very good for you if you're selling or you're renting. If you look at our ninja mess methods in social media, you're going to benefit from them. Absolutely. The bike ride. Yep. We're doing a bike ride, us three. That's why there's three of us here together tonight. And um, this, you're going to see some warrior riding from this chap mm. who's uh laughs at me every time i talk about doing 100 kilometers a day um but we're doing 100 kilometers a day each day five days in a row 530 michael's going to be the support crew vaping yeah i mean vaping gonna be... we're going to bring a masseuse to follow me around the whole time it's gonna be, i'm joke. actually gonna yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna be awesome is that bad yeah yeah so. so last time i did the get ride, a and a roller, you can be on yeah. the roller, we'll be getting that. All right. <laughs> but last time we did the ride, um, everyone was really sore after every night. And generally, if we went to a hotel, these hotels are regional hotels, they're not very advanced hotels. If you got, if there was someone that could do a massage for 28 riders, mm. it was one person. So I said to Michael, I got the okay from Lisa first. Before you have a girl, before I have a girl following you around massaging you in Thailand, and I said, "Look, Lise, what do you reckon? We just find someone in Thailand who can do massage, and they just jump in their car, follow us around mm. to each each place, and mornings medical massage. Yeah, medical oh. massage. Oh, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> they can perform. They can perform medical massage. Okay. Um. So that's what we're going to be doing. So yeah. Yeah, so stay tuned on that. 
Yep. Anything else you want to add to that? I think we're good. I think we're good. I think that's done. news. market. What about the real estate market? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Pravs, what do you see yeah. in your world? Um, tricky. <laughs> tricky. The market is. So, what do you yeah. do? Rentals? Property uh, management. What's your rentals? job at Novak? Yeah. Okay. Pravs? Okay. I I do pretty much everything that uh, gets onto my plate. Yes. Yep. So I do uh, residential leasing mm -hmm. in terms of the professional accommodations we've got. Yep. So I manage those, those three big properties. Then I do commercial property management. Mm -hmm. And now I'm helping with commercial leasing. I do a bit of accounts, a bit of property management. Oh, man. Stuff and you, the you were formerly in the KGB. <laughs> yes. yes. I just, so I just didn't put my glasses on. Pravins, yeah. you're a quite a scary... Pravins scares us with his education mm. sometimes. So he's, he's got this reputation of being KGB the exact Indian KGB. Mm. And um, what else do you do? Um, that's about it, I would say. I, what I, do you do? Commercial sales and leasing in Indian KGB. I do everything. <laughs> so market's good. Do it. Well, residentials, um, commercial, has the pricing's been a lot more stable. Days on market's longer. Leasing, it's, it's strong. Residentials have the big growth. Like look at Angie's yes. auction. On oh, good one. It's a good thing to chat about. Yeah, uh, auction on. I just wanted to look at the camera. Either. Oh, it's yeah. all good for the viewers. I've always realised. Um, Angela had an auction. This is the perfect Angela sort of Gutsios. Gutsios, um, agent of the year. DY. Yes. Um, he had so a. Awesome. Yeah. So he had. This was a perfect. I'll bring it up at the moment on the screen. Thirty-three NIMBY Ave, Narawena. It was an original home for sale on like 600 uh, square meter block. Basically this property in the lowest of the market was something around that sort of 1 million and 50, 115 would have been where they were selling unrenovated home block level. And it sold on Sunday for 1.55. That's like a $400,000 swing. Yeah, that's incredible. So, and basically that was the price in 2017, dropped to a million and then back up. So I think that's a very, very good indication of where the market is at, um, to, to put that sort of bluntly, that, that's great vibes. They're forecasting, so all round all's a 20% drop, where for, it's apparently in, on average Sydney has come back 8%. They are uh, forecasting the market to get back to the um, 2017, 2017 by yeah. April and their uh, further 12% growth. So 20% growth this year is what it's forecasting. Great person to follow on LinkedIn, Christian Stevens, has a lot of data, very, very, um, it, it's very good for you to follow it up with the data because it's very interesting um, of the growth coming through. So. And rental markets, I think uh, they're still correct me if I'm wrong. Probably lot, when you look at a lot of people have come on the market. So over two, we're still suffering from 2017 boom. A lot of people yes. bought exactly properties for investments, which then come on for rental. So if we normally have 500 properties on the market for rent, we got up to seven, eight, nine hundred. It doubled. And there's not necessarily that much population growth. So do you see a little bit better now coming in the last sort of three um, months? Or? I would say so in the last nine months, I've, I've been watching those numbers closely. Okay? Mm. And the and the biggest sort of spread we had in terms of properties on market, the residential mm. was like 55, 57, yep. okay, on a, on a Saturday run. And now we are back to 25, 26. Yep, normal. So it's like, it's, it's pumping out. People yep. need properties here. And but what about prices? Not, yes, exactly. That's Same the second well. point yeah. I'm oh. coming up to. Yep. So what I've seen is we, we I don't see any property on our rent roll that we would have to bring the rents down. Mm. We're still going steady up and over. Yep. There are properties that were like prime, like the um, North Manly Boarding House. Yes. We used to rent it for 300 and I'm right now I'm leasing it for 360 yep. and easily. I don't have any Beautiful. more stock to lease. Four, four, there four, are more right. inquiries. Nice. 257, 100% lease. We lease two weeks even before we have a property open. Look at that. Yep. So, okay. so there is still a lot of demand in the residential market. Mm -hmm. There is still 
huge potential in terms of rental yeah. growth. So there's no real, like you never, you hear sometimes out of your know, horror stories of three, six months, like three months vacant, 10 weeks, not really seeing that northern not, beaches. Not where we are, not yeah. in, in, in the DY and sort of surrounding suburbs. Maybe out west, yep. yes, because people just, just went there. Mm. They had money, disposable income and money to invest into something, yep. never realizing will there be a population who can actually use these properties. Yes. Who doesn't want to spend a lovely summer afternoon on DY Beach? If you leave, have a property mm. and you guys close to beach, yeah, that would just sell yeah. like a hot cake any day. Yeah, so still things are renting, uh, still good prices, lots of numbers coming through and sale as well. We're all forecasting for further growth, uh, especially that residential market, why things are cheap. So still great buying. And guys, when you, I, I always stress, if you watch Morning Minutes with Mark and I, do not overthink it. When you, you buy property long-term and if it's, for example, 800 and they want 820 or you get it for 780 with the market doubling for the last 30 years, 40 years has doubled every 10 years. When you sell in 10 years or 20 years, it really, what we've seen is it doesn't matter really what you bought it for. If you paid five or 10 grand more or less, it, who cares? You just buy the property. The key is to buy the property and not get too caught up on it because guys, the amount of people I see stress themselves out looking for six months, seeing 60 properties. Uh, it can put a lot of pressure on relationships yourself. So try and um, don't overthink it. And also um, remember, are you buying an investment or you're going to live in it? I think it's always better to have the investment hat on first and then rather than if you live in, because it's not a wife. You can sell it if you don't like it. You can move out of it if you don't like it. So if you buy a property that's a good investment and if you choose to live in it, great. Or you, your family dynamics change, you move out, you've still got a good investment. Yeah, um, I, I, I think always look from the investor hat first is what I would recommend. Otherwise, because and you can you can generally buy a better property. You can generally rent a better property than what you can buy. Exactly. So you buy an investment and you rent something. So and then in two years that may change. So I think people think oh, I'm going to own it for 20 years. It has to be perfect for 20 years. No, you can move to multiple properties. So I think have a bit more casual approach. Even though it's very it's a huge decision. I get that and treat it like that. But also maybe bring it back a bit. Be a little bit more relaxed on the type of prop, like your attitude yeah, towards exactly. moving in, but definitely do your due diligence. Definitely do your yeah, checks by the lawyer. Don't go in there with your eyes closed, but it's not yeah, it's not necessarily going to be your forever home. Yep. And even if it is your forever home, things change. So um, look at the numbers first. Seek advice by local agents. Us, we're happy to help. Anything else you want to add? I think, I think I we've think wrapped that, it up. That would oh, be moving. Uh, that minutes. would be a great, great piece of advice that you just stated. Because I think, say someone walks in to buy a property at this point, they just get confused with the amount of, you know, everyone's got a bit of knowledge to share. Yeah. And that's what confuses. I think when you and say- an opinion, don't they? Yes, oh. people, when they buy a property from investment point of perspective, mm -hmm. I think as long as they just stick to the fact that I'm just buying a number, Yes. I just need to know my maths, whether this is going to work for me. Yep. It will you know, always work out. It yeah. will always work out. You know, one thing I've, I've looked at Vin, is you look at, when I look at Manly Vale, look at DY, pick any suburb in the Northern beaches. It yep. doesn't matter where I buy. It's all really gone up the same price. Yeah. They have different entry points. One suburb, you may be able to get in at 500, one, maybe 600, one, maybe a million. But when you look at the growth, it's all relative the same. Yeah, the percentage growth on each suburb is pretty much more or less one or two plus minus. Yeah, but it's there. So end Correct. of the day, you pump in some money, you'll get proportionate growth. Yes. So, so don't overthink it from the style of property exactly. or the area. And that's all we can say, guys. So thank you very thank much you. for tuning in. 745 in the morning, Mark and myself thank will you. be live as well. Thank you very much. And Cheers. please support us for the ride. And we would love every contribution from each one of you. Thank yeah. you guys. And what you were going to give, double it. And that's what you give. Thank you. <laughs>